Welcome to the Frisco Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Walker, and we are talking to local business owners, Jim and Cherith, about NABO. We're going to learn what that means today. So welcome to the studio, guys. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for having us here, Kelly. We really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I know a little about NABO, but I don't know if our audience knows everything, so I want to fill them in. Um, the basics, I guess, is that Frisco has its own food technology startup, so tell us what that means, what it's all about. Absolutely. Uh, Kelly, thanks uh, for having us here. We, we love being here at Lifestyle Frisco's office. So, well, the first thing is we are a delivery app, and neighbor means neighbor in Danish. So true to the word, we are all about neighbors. We are about building stronger communities, building stronger neighborhoods. That's what we are about. Now, if you take yourself uh, back to the start of the pandemic, one of the things that we actually uh, saw were people going out of their way to help each other. You know, I, I personally uh, reached out to folks who were quite early in our neighborhood and said, hey, do you guys want something? And it was not just not me. Everybody was reaching out to people mm -hmm. that, hey, how can we help you? Yes. Think about the pandemic. Think about the snowstorm. And these are not one-off events. We know that neighbors want to help each other, but there's just nothing out there. When we actually looked at the market up, uh, there are a lot of apps, delivery apps, but they're not focused towards communities. They're all focused towards a being a gig economy, mm -hmm. right? You order through the app, somebody comes and delivers at your door. They're not transparent. The other day, in fact, I'll, I'll quote you a funny incident. Uh, my wife and I were talking and my wife said, hey, uh, can you order something that's $5 or more from Kroger? And I said, why? <laughs> she said, I want to get the bill above $35 so we don't pay a delivery fee. fee. And I was like... Yeah. It's crazy, you know. So so we got talking together and we said, um, Charith and I, we said, we need to bridge this gap. We need to bridge the gap and get something in the market that's for neighbors, for communities. And that's how the genesis of Nabo began, by trying to build a delivery app that can bridge neighbors who are at stores buying something for them, th themselves and neighbors who are actually wanting something. Who are at so home. That, yeah. Who are at home. Needing help. That, absolutely. We wanted to bridge that gap and that's the genesis of neighbors. Which is such the neighborly way. Exactly. And unfortunately, tend to lose that over time with, with schedules and just distance. And I don't know, there's something about the loss of, you know, that community neighbor feel sometimes. So I love the genesis of this and that you're, you're, no, you're bringing that back, like the whole, can I borrow a cup of sugar? It's, can you grab me one at the store, right? You know, we, we grew up with that. Hey, uh, knock the door and say, I'm out of sugar. Uh, I need to have my cup of tea. Can I have sugar? Yeah. We want to get that back. Yes, I love it. So you, you mentioned uh, fees and delivery fees, but I want to know kind of other things about what makes Nabo different from other types of delivery app, delivery apps that can help people out. Absolutely, Kelly. So, so you know what happened originally when James first reached out to me and said, hey, buddy, let's build a delivery app. And I was like, there's so many out there in the market already. I don't want to really focus on building a delivery app. <laughs> another one. Yeah, another yeah. one. What's the point? Then he was like, no, 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 you got to hear me out. Let's, let's get together on a call one day, and I'll explain my concept. Uh, Jim and I go uh, uh, way back. We've known each other for a, a few years. Our kids play together. Okay. So we got together. We started talking, and then he finally explained it to me, and then I got it. And then we quickly nailed it down to our mission to make this app more neighborly focused. So our mission is to bring neighbors together, mm -hmm. make neighborhoods uh, more neighborly. And that was the premise and we then said, okay, so now how do we bridge that gap and how do we make this successful? So we first and foremost said, okay, we cannot be charging exuberant fees right. like other apps. Because so, that takes away the simplicity of needing just two or three things. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. So if you look at some other delivery apps, they have complex fee structures. So we said, okay, none of that. We'll make a very simple free structure. We'll be very transparent with mm -hmm. our customers. So all we do is charge uh, 5% uh, or uh, $1.99, whichever happens to be the most. And there is uh, no minimum number of orders, like Jim said. So people can place orders for any value. And, and next, we said, okay, how do we make it bring, how do we get the neighbors together more? So we make then it like, make it local, right? Make, make it, it local, yeah. yeah. So we, we said, okay, we need to Im implement some features like groups feature. So imagine you have a few friends in your neighborhood who are all part of like a keto diet and you mm -hmm. want to be get together and talk about it. So we said, okay, let's create a group feature where people can form their own custom groups 
and then they can uh, help each other when they go to the grocery store and say, hey, I'm buying this thing and I plan to make this meal today. Does anybody want to do the same thing? I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. And so you can, you have instant notification of somebody is already there in your neighborhood and they can bring something to you. Okay. Like as you're talking, I'm sitting here thinking up all these people <laughs> that I need in my vegan group, right? Because, yeah, exactly. because I do, I have this community of pe- They're not all my exact direct neighbors. Mm-hmm. They're in some other pieces of Frisco, but we talk a lot about food and, hey, where'd you there get you that? Go. I saw there you post you. that vegan butter. Where'd that come from? <laughs> Whatever. And so um, I already know, like, that would be perfect for yes. me and some of my friends who eat a specific way or, like you said, yeah. just are, I don't know, like-minded in a, in a certain way that they shop. So Absolutely. that is cool. I yep. love that idea. And, and, then, and then we started thinking, hey, we're already doing so much good. How can we make uh, enable people to do more good? Uh, so we thought, okay, let's see if we can work together with local charities. Mm. And how that really unfolded was that we said, okay, if we look at our target shoppers, they're not really in it to make money. They're just helping their neighbors out and they just want to have fun, uh, join groups. So we said, okay, what if we give them an opportunity to donate their tips to a charity? Oh, cool. So we partnered with a local charity. Uh, You might know this, Love Packs. Yes. So we have successfully onboarded them to our platform. We love Love Packs at wow. Lifestyle Frisco. Yes, we have partnered with them for many things, and they are great. They yeah. do a lot. They work really hard, do I a lot of good yeah. for this community. And I'm very, very pleased to have this feature because now there are two ways for somebody to do good. Mm-hmm. So you can help your neighbors out, and when your neighbor pays you tips like for, for your service, you have an option to say, I just want these tips to be donated to my local charity. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned the shopper. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm curious, like, I know you're early in this, but who is your shopper? or Who do you think your shopper is? Because I do want to clarify, like you mentioned, you don't become a shopper for Nabo to make money. This is not an Uber driver or an errand runner where you're, this is not a side job, right? right. This is a community centric thing where you're you're grabbing stuff for your neighbors for right. the good of, goodness of being your neighbor right yep. so who who are your shoppers and then when someone hears this and says okay i need to get in on that how do they how do they get in on it and sign up that is yep. an amazing question uh, kelly so our typical shopper like you rightly said is not here for the money it's they're here from a from a neighborly perspective so Anybody who wants to help neighbors are our typical shoppers and the best part about our app Nabo is the shopper and the customer have the same app. You don't have to log into a different app as a shopper. And I know in, in, in many of our uh, competitors, you have to log into a shopper app. And a customer has to log into a customer app. Both of them are so beautifully integrated in our app that you could, at one instance, decide to be a customer. At the very next instance, decide to be a shopper with the same app. So That's let's, great, yeah. Let, let's take an example of uh, a teenager uh, who's on summer break and you know they want to help their neighbors or earn some tips. They're our typical shoppers. Mm-hmm. Let's take an example of somebody shopping at Kroger at 11 at night. And, you know, they're like, I have some time. I can see orders by a uh, number of items, by distance from my house. So they see an order that's 50 feet from their house. They're like, wow. Yeah. I never know, knew they needed some OTC medi- medication. Right. You know, they're our typical shoppers. Anybody who wants to help neighbors. And and I love the idea of you're already in the store. Don't make them get out and go get the thing. Because none of us like to get out and go get you know a few things well, none of us one or two. like to make big trips either usually but yeah. yeah for one or two things like it's so nice when you don't have to make that trip sometimes right so. and, and kelly as a shopper you decide which order you want to pick up you can decide either by tips either by number of items distance from my house so when you log in as a shopper and you see the app you can see that hey i've got three orders which are 100 feet from my house i've got an order which has just two items the exact same items i'm buying yeah so the the control is with you yeah i love that so yeah when you talk about your shoppers it's really anybody who is going to be in a grocery store or who needs something from a grocery store or your your people which is a wide range of people, right? Wide, it's men, it's range. women, it's young, it's old. Like it's everybody eats, everybody shops. So yeah, a- and anybody can use yeah, this. Yeah, and, and and also uh, I've t- Jim and I talk about this. You know how hot, extremely hot Texas summers get here, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of kids out of high school they like to get some extra money, right? Mm-hmm. They want to mow some the neighbor's uh, lawn, mow sure. their yard, or wash cars. Now there is a new way of doing this. You can actually go and help out your neighbors. And make the extra cash that way as well. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. This, just the options are limitless. 
Yeah, I love that. Okay, well, at the beginning, you mentioned the genesis of this coming out, um, you know, in a year in 2020 when it was a rough year for people and we needed to help each other. So obviously, this is a young idea, right? A young concept, a young app. And I know that you've gone through some testing and different things. So where are you in that life cycle? And what's what's next? Like, what can we watch for for Nabo? Absolutely, Kelly. So the journey so far has been incredible. I mean, for all of us here at Nabo, we have uh, started out, uh, we've done a lot of research, an enormous amount of research. We've looked at other apps, we've done some market research, and we've done the development, and we've had the app used by some early adopters mm -hmm. who gave us extremely valuable feedback. We've made improvements, and we're, we're extremely uh, excited to announce here that uh, we are launching the app uh, for general availability mm -hmm. in both App Store uh, for Apple users, iPhone users, and for uh, Android users in Google Play Store on July 4th. Oh, that's so, great. Okay. Yeah, July 4th is a huge day for all Americans. I mean, that's that's the the main reason why we chose that day because we also want to kind of bring out the people bring out the neighborliness of our app. We say, hey, we have uh, an extremely important day that we're all proud of, and we are going out of our way to celebrate this. Everyone gets together. Everyone comes out into their... Yep. Uh, it's uh, it's yep, a community yeah, day. Exactly. For sure. Okay, I love that. It's yeah. easy to remember, too. Exactly. For everybody so to we're very remember. excited about that, and we can't wait uh, to, be, uh, to tell you the truth. And, and it won't stop there, really, right? Like, once we, once we launch, once we start um, helping uh, the uh, North Texas, uh, uh, or DFW, rather, we're going to be launching all, of, all over DFW. Once we start there, and once we have a good customer base, mm -hmm. we are going to expand to other cities in Texas. So, major cities. We are thinking Austin. We are thinking Houston, and and so on and so forth. Yeah. And what that means is that we also need to start looking at uh, other big retailers. More stores. More stores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and because and, because we didn't touch on that, mm -hmm. who are the store partners that you work with now? Great that you asked. So we have uh, successfully onboarded two major retailers, mm -hmm. both Kroger and Walmart. And we also have uh, one local uh, uh, business, local to Frisco, in fact, uh, small business. And we want to kind of balance that out in our app. Mm -hmm. We want to have a good number of major retailers uh, because that's where most people tend to shop. Yeah. But we also want to support our local businesses. I love that. Yeah. Because there are definitely items that you um, need to go to your specialty or your local retailers for. Absolutely. There's items that it goes both ways mm -hmm. that you right. can't get there. Exactly. And there's some that you really want to get there. You seek them out for that reason. So that's great that those will start popping up yeah. too more and more as more you guys more. as you guys fully launch and you get those the momentum and more partners and relationships, there'll be more that come right. on. Because one thing one thing is there, uh, Kelly, we're a local app. We, we're born out of Frisco. We, we want to make sure the community is involved. So these local small businesses, we reached out to them and said, hey, here's what we have. Here's how we can help you. Do you want to get onboarded? You know, so we're reaching out to them actively, you know, uh, local charities, local businesses, mm -hmm. because... We're a Frisco-based startup. Yeah. We have to help Frisco first. Love that, yeah. yeah. And, and, and some of these local small businesses that are run by uh, mom-and-pop sh shops, like elderly people, they're not too tech-savvy. Right. They they don't know how to get started. So we want to help them as much as we can. Because, uh, and during our research, we found out that other delivery apps, uh, they charge a lot of fees to these retailers for their services. And, and that's where we also want to focus. We want to make sure that they're getting their fair cut and not just getting kind yeah. of... Uh, yeah, picked apart, it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it needs to be, it needs to make sense for them. It's different for a big box versus yeah. the mom and pop. Mm -hmm. it, exactly. They just don't have the margins and they can't give as much to, you know, to a, a supplier That's right, right. Um, as, as others can. Yeah. So I was curious when you talked about um, beta testing research and feedback and you said you got some valuable and made some adjustments. Are there any of those you want to, like, mention? I'm curious. If there was anything cool that you learned, all that is always surprising, right? You oh. don't know what your feedback is going to come back. That's why we do it. You know. So I, I was curious I, if there's anything that um, that you learned right. that you're now proud of as a yeah. great feature. I, so one of the things that uh, really uh, hit us was as we were partnering with uh, one of the local uh, uh, retailers, uh, local to Frisco, re we realized that 
we not only need delivery uh, feature, which we already have, that's our uh, the main concept, mm -hmm. but there's a need, clear need for pickup, especially for the small uh, retailers. We then got our uh, dev team together and then we decided, okay, how can we roll out this pickup feature as fast as possible? Because we needed to show value to this uh, partner. And that was an example of how we got feedback from both our early beta testers, the mm -hmm. customers, and also a retailer. The stores. Yeah, yeah. They said this. Most people here, they actually just come to do a pickup. Yeah. They they're close by. They don't really want to pay uh, any fees. So, so what can you do for us? So yeah, that's and they just don't want to go in the store. They just don't want to go in the store. Is they just want to stay in the car and call and then get it delivered. It's in so trunk. interesting how the pandemic spurred on some of these new behaviors mm -hmm. that will continue on. That's right. Yeah. Right. We've now learned that we can do things different, a different way out of need that we had to, but that because um, technology was able to shift and make, you know, accommodate those new behaviors, yeah. like they're going to, they're here to stay. They We're are. all going to shop differently from yeah. now on. In fact, there was a study that we uh, remember, James, uh, uh, we encountered what, what was it like by 2025? Oh yeah, have, yeah. So around uh, the study was around 70 percent of all shoppers will shop online by 2025. Wow. That, that is crazy, and that number is 70. amazing. So that's why uh, you know another thing that uh, one of our uh, shoppers said, "Hey, uh, I'm not at a grocery store. What if when are you guys going to support?" Home improvement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, so what we decided, you know, and we had this plan already. So we are launching right now with grocery stores. But as a shopper, you're in Michael's, you're at Hobby Lobby, wow. you're at Lowe's, anywhere as a shopper, if you're 7-Eleven, we'll support you. Oh, my goodness. That's a whole new world that is. to open up, to think about. Yeah, there's days when I make multiple trips to Home Depot, right? Because you just, you don't know what you need sometimes until you're in the project. It's, my wife makes me do that every time. Yeah, yeah. I buy 10 bags of mulch and she's like, I want 11. Yeah. <laughs> One bag of mulch? I, yes, I know. Believe me. Did she download the app? <laughs> she did. <laughs> Well, yeah. speaking of, so I'm in. I love it. I love the idea, and I'm going to invite friends, and, and we'll tell our um, Lifestyle Frisco readers, obviously, to sign up, and we'll target that July 4th date that everybody can use it. So are there any other final words, anything we missed that our audience needs to know before we sign off? Well, well I I think this app really hits a home run. It's it's all about, you know, helping people, helping neighbors. So if you have that mindset, I would, I would really highly, uh, you know, recommend you Go to neighbordelivery.com. That's our website. You can learn all about us, our genesis, our idea, our vision, our mission. And then you can also download the app from there. So, yeah, just just take that trip. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, on our website, uh, neighbordelivery.com, we also have uh, put together some great tutorial videos. Uh, back to your question earlier on uh, about shoppers. Mm -hmm. So we have videos that explain how a shopper can uh, sign up uh, using our app and then start helping right away. Yeah. Awesome. Now, for those of you who are listening to this episode because it rolled onto your playlist and you haven't seen it, NABO is spelled N-A-B-O. So um, when we're saying NABO delivery, that's N-A-B-O delivery.com. Just wanted to make sure we said that for those who are not reading the word <laughs> on the screen somewhere. So. Thank you, Kelly. Awesome. Well, Cherith and Jim, thank you so much uh, for teaching us a little bit about NABO and for building it and developing it this app for our community. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Here. I wish I could end with a jingle, but I don't have one. Oh. But maybe we will one day. Maybe. Yes, that's next. After you conquer all of the home improvement stores and the craft stores in all of Texas, then you, you guys can get a jingle going. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of the Frisco Podcast. Remember to subscribe so you can hear us next time. <laughs>